everyone, it's Ellie Mae with Artist Pre today, and I wanted to share a quick tutorial project on how you can create customized kitchen towels that could be used for gifts or your own personal kitchen. Um, I'm going to go through the supplies really quick, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be using these kitchen towels from Artist Pre. I'm going to be the most one of the most important things is the artist pre protective paper that we're going to use when we go to press. You can use a pencil. You do not want to use pen when you're using the sublimation. Pencil is always great if you need it at all. In today's tutorial, some scissors, ordinary copy paper. That's what we're going to be using today. And I'm going to quickly show you two different methods. Um, it's going to depend on what kind of stencils you are using. So I have some stencils over here and I'll explain those in just a minute. And then I have two different colors of the Artist Pre Sublimation inks. So I'm going to be sharing how to use the inks and I will also be sharing how you can do this with your Artist Pre Sublimation markers as well. So we'll quickly go through that as well. You want to keep your Artist Pre markers point down for about 20 minutes before you go to start to get that ink flowing. Then you're also going to need some Artist Pre tape. This is heat tape that will be safe in your heat press. And you want to make sure to have some wipes and some paper towels. Those are off camera. And I also have some low tack washi tape. And mine is wine themed. But that's what we're going to be using today. But you could use any washi tape. You could even use painter's tape. You just want a low tack tape for when we get to masking some things. So first I'm going to share with you a couple of the ones that I've done. So I just want to give you some tips real quick on this. So I'm going to share with you some of the tips on how you can prevent this ink bleed out here. We're going to be using a technique, a masking sort of technique, but you can see that my stencils that I have are pretty close to the edge. So when we go to use some of the sublimation inks, um, I'm going to show you a way you can prevent that. In this case, I could also cut around it before I go to press, but we can also avoid that too. And then I have another example here, and I will also press some of these for the final result. But you want to make sure when you're applying your ink that you're not getting it too heavy because it could bleed onto that copy paper. Um, you know, you, you don't have those crisp edges there in some of those cases. And you can kind of see it on my first one too. I got it really heavy at the top here. So really, it's up to you. It's not a bad thing to practice, and all you're out is a piece of copy paper. So that's the great part about Artist Pre. Here's another one with a little more detailed stencil. You can see I got a little bit of a bleed there. So I then did another one. And this one I used a little bit heavier of a copy paper, but my painter's tape kind of took away some of that edges. And then here's another tip for you. I noticed that when I went to do the second stencil, of the words up here. When you're doing words, you need to have those reversed. So stencils are great for being able to do that. But when I did that, it transferred some of the ink that was on the stencil that wasn't quite dry yet to this section right here. Now, since I can put just a piece of heat tape over that, it's gonna sort of mask that and it's not going to sublimate onto my towel when I go to press this. So I will definitely be pressing this. Another tip that I'm gonna share with you and I'll only show you pressing on one side, but your Artist Pre towels have two sides to it. So you could press on either end and have a different design. So I will share that also in the final photos, but you'll see how I do the stencil technique with these wine glass stencils here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up and we will be right back. Okay, so the first technique I'm going to show you is I'm going to be using the Artist Pre Sublimation Stamp inks, and I'm going to be using them with a blending brush. So I ha have a brush for each of the colors that I'm going to be using. You want to keep these dedicated to your sublimation products and not be swapping them out with other types of inks. But I also have this stencil here, and like I said before, it's close to the edges, so I'm going to show you a trick on that so we can prevent this outside edge from transferring. And then I'm going to take my Artist Pre kitchen towel and I have a silicone mat to protect my surface, but you just want to be careful. Um, you can use an extra sheet of copy paper, something to protect your surface. But here is my towel from Artist Pre. And as I said, you have two sides, so you have two ends to this and we can 
do a design on either end and have it be a little bit more customized. So we have our artist pre towel that is ready to go. And then we have our copy paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to place my stencil down. You want to make sure what direction you want this stencil in because when we apply it to our blank, it's going to be the reverse. When you sublimate, it'll be the reverse. And that's why we also have to reverse our text when we're putting it onto the copy paper. Now, two ways you can do this. The first way I'm going to show you is I'm actually just going to use the blending brushes with the stamp pad inks. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to use the washi tape. I'm going to secure this in place just in a couple places on my copy paper so it doesn't move. And so we can try to get those crisp edges. And then because my edges of my stencil are very close, I'm going to take an extra sheet of copy paper and I'm actually just going to cut it up. And if you are feeling daring, you don't have to do this. You can see from my first one, I did not. And I'm just going to mask this off. Now you could also do this by using painter's tape but I found this works just as well. So if I take a little bit more of my washi tape and I just secure that in place, then it's going to allow me a little bit more freedom to not have to worry about hitting the edges of that stencil. And you just wanna make sure you're covering those edges when you secure it. And of course, since I'm on camera, it's going to cause me issues. So I'll speed this up a little bit while I get it all secured. And then once our mask is in place, we have a little bit more freedom with our brushes and we don't have to worry about those edges or going outside the lines too much. So in this case, we have our, I'm going to start with our red sublimation ink. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I do get the red in the glass area and you don't have to use two colors, but you could do this all out of black as well. But I wanted to show you that it is possible to do it with two colors. Since my red is my lighter color, I'm actually going to not worry so much about it getting outside in the glass area, I'm actually going to color that all in. So I'm just going to carefully brush this on and I will speed the video up as I do this. The one thing that I like about this technique is that it gives you a variance of color and start less is more, but you can add a little bit more dimension into your object because it's not a solid color like if you were using the markers and either way it just gives you a little bit different look but I'm actually going to color in on this glass because then I'm going to come back with my black and come over top of that and it's since it's a lighter color it shouldn't make too much of a difference but this way I can go outside the lines a little bit more Okay, now once I have that, I am going to then take and bring in my black ink. This one I do want to be a little bit more careful because I just want it in the glass area. So I'm just going to take this brush and I'm going to carefully fill it in. It'll be a little bit harder when I'm on the recording. And I'll speed this up and hopefully not get any of the black inside. Okay, 
Now, what I'm going to say to you is it takes practice. So even though I've done it a couple of times, I can already tell that I messed up. There's a little bit of black in there, but I'm only at a piece of copy paper, so I can do this again. So I am going to fast forward this and I will show you the finished finished project. Okay, so here I could tell already why I stopped and started fresh to give you a new look. It's just copy paper. I can simply put this one aside and practice again. So I could already tell I got a little bit of black right in there. And it's just from trying to keep myself out of the video while I'm trying to color it in. And then this edge here was a little bit smeared. So I redid this. And here is my unveil. So that was my practice. You can see I got it over there. I'm just going to cut that off. But I'm going to take off my little mask from my edges. Go ahead and throw that away. And then I have my... And it's still not perfect, but we're going to go with that. More, The more you do it, the more you will get better at it. And it will also depend on your stencil as well. But I think that came out pretty good. I got a little bit of extra ink right in there. But otherwise, I think that is great. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to clean my stencil really quickly so that this ink doesn't dry on it. And I'm simply just using a baby wipe. And I can do that on my silicone mat surface. You could also just take this and run it under some water as well. And then once I have that pretty well wiped up, just going to take a paper towel, dry my surface off, place that down there. So I do like to clean my stencils right away. And you can tell I've used this a few times. It's you know, The more you use it, the more it's going to get color on it. So I'll just set that aside. So here is my wine glass and what I can do is I can just take my scissors and I can cut this off so you could add more to this you do want to let that ink dry before we do it so I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you one more technique so this time I'm going to use this stencil and I'm going to grab my piece of copy paper and this time I can have a little bit more control, but not quite as much variation in that color. So the inks give you a little bit more variation in color versus the ink or the artist pre pens, they're going to be more of a solid color. So what I'm going to simply do is I'm just going to take my black marker. Um, you could do it two ways. You could pencil this in and then come back in and freehand draw it, or I can simply just use my pen and my stencil, just like you are used to doing stencils. Come in here and draw it in. So I'm going to draw this in with the black, and then I'm actually going to use the chisel tip. This is more like a wine color, so I'm going to do that one. So let's go. Okay, and then you want to make sure to cap your artist pre markers after you're done to maintain their lifespan and they don't dry out. And I'm simply just going to remove this. And you could have removed it while you were stenciling it right after you've done the outline. It's completely up to you. Um, I just chose to try to keep that safety zone a little bit while I was doing it. But there you have your design with your sublimation markers as well. So you have a couple different options. I used stencils, but you could also hand letter. You could hand draw pictures. This would be great for gift ideas for grandparents that you could have 
you know, kids do any kind of drawings that they have, or if you are very talented and can draw, that's an option too. And one thing I want to mention here is this stencil that I used for a couple of the designs when I was practicing, and I will press this so we can see the end result, but first the text, you want to make sure to mirror that text so you're going to stencil through the back side and then it's going to be reversed when we go to press that. So that's why you're going to see this is reversed or mirrored on my example. And then your method of application is just going to vary by the detail in your stencil. This stencil is probably not a good candidate for trying to do it with the pens. Could you do it? Yes, but it's probably going to take a lot more time than what it did for me to place this onto my piece of paper, tape it down, and use the brush with the inks. So that's just a couple tips as we go along. And then I'm going to let this one dry, and I'm going to come back. We're going to get this set up for on our heat press. Okay, so I pulled out the two best ones that I had. So I'm going to go ahead and press this one and then I will go ahead and even though I have some mistakes, I'm just going to go ahead and press it because it happens and these are going to be for my kitchen. I'm good with it. So we will take our artist pre towel and I'm going to first take the tags off. And then what I'm going to do is I have my heat press over here on the right side of the camera and it is set for 380 degrees and it's going to press for 60 seconds and that is according to the artist pre website but the first thing I want to do is I'm going to fold my towel into thirds and I'm going to press this so I have a center point to line that up with. And you could do a full design, the full length of the bottom of your towel, or you can simply do the middle section. Really just depends on how your towel is going to look. So I'm going to just press this. This also helps for me to get my pressure um, kind of adjusted before I go to press. But if I press that, then I'll know where to place my design. So then I have a little bit. I'm going to take this mat off. And now when I unfold it, I am able to see where I can center my design at. There we go. We have some pressing marks. And in this case, since I have just a simple design, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut around it. And if you did happen to get any ink on the edges, this is where you could cut around it, but that's not always possible with a design. So that's why I shared how you could mask that. And then I'm going to decide where I want to place this. Looks pretty good to me. I'm going to take some of the Artist Pre heat tape and I'm just going to carefully tape that down so my design does not move when I'm transferring this. I'm just going to put another little piece up here. And then the most important part of this, now with this, if you've watched any of the previous Artist Pre um, videos, I usually do a sublimation sandwich. And we're still going to do the sandwich, but we're not going to be able to fold it over because we have a lot of the towel excess. So I'm just going to measure out enough to cover the bottom of my heat press. Going to cut that off. Probably the noisiest part of the whole thing. I'm going to cut another section off. So I have two pieces of protective paper. I'm going to go ahead and lay my protective paper down on my heat press, the bottom area of my heat press. And then I'm going to carefully take my blank and I can put it onto my heat press surface. You want your print on the top. So you have 
protective paper on the bottom, your blank, then your print is on the top, so it comes in contact with your heat press. And then I'm going to cover this again with my protective paper, and I'm going to press according to the instructions, which is 60 seconds. So here we go. Carefully lift the top of your heat press and slowly release it. And then I'm just gonna let that set for a few seconds. It's going to let that ink settle and we can reveal. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. I'm actually going to grab my Artist Pre-Protective Pad. So I will make sure to link this in the supply list, but the Artist Pre-Protective Pad is something I use all the time when I'm doing the sublimation. Protects my workspace from any of the heat. I'm gonna slide that off, then I'm going to carefully remove the protective paper. You want to make sure that if there's any ink on this, I can see it, hopefully you can see it just a little bit in the video, that you do not reuse that because that would transfer to, or it could transfer to your other blank. Now, let's take a look. Ooh, look at those colors. Now here is my finished project. And you can see that I got a little bit of black ink over here, but every project you do, you're going to get better and better. So hopefully those tips have helped give you some ideas. That is what the entire video is about, is you don't have to recreate the same exact project as I do, but it gives you ideas on what you could create. There are so many possibilities. Make sure to Follow Artist Pre on all of the social media channels that are linked in the description below. And let's take a look at some of the finished projects. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy creating with Artist Pre. So I did end up going back and doing the stencil again because it's just a little bit of copy paper. And every time I do it, I get a little bit better. You can see the wine glass towels finished here. And then here is one where I used the um, wine stencil with that little piece of heat tape that I showed you at the beginning and it did not transfer and then here's a look at the supplies I used and the heat tape the protective paper the stamp pads and the finished towels and then I threw in a look at what it looks like on one of the artist pre wine bags I will put the link in the description below for that as well turned out beautiful and just another photo Thanks for joining me. I hope you have lots of fun playing with the Artist Pre sublimation products.